All right, so let's talk about specific heat. Specific heat we're going to denote with the letter C. Um, it's the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius, or one Kelvin. The reason these can be interchanged is because they have the same incremental value. They can be switched around. Um, all right, so when we're talking about heat, we're actually measuring heat and energy. And uh, let's talk about the numbers that we're actually going to be seeing in the units. So we measure energy in calories or joules. So one calorie equals 4.184 joules. But this is not the calorie that you see on the back of a food label. That is actually calorie with a capital C. That's actually one kilocalorie. Um, and those equal 1,000 calories or 4,184 joules. So understanding what these numbers mean when talking about heat, let's go back to talking about specific heat. Um, and that is measured in joules per gram degree Celsius. So let's talk about the specific heat of water. Water has a specific heat of 4.184 um, joules per gram degree Celsius. And what does that mean? That means for every gram of water um, you have that you want to raise one degree Celsius, it requires 4.184 joules of energy. Um, that's actually relatively high compared to the rest of the things on this table and most substances actually. That's because um, it takes a lot of energy to heat up water. If you think about when you're boiling water on the stove or something, um, it actually takes a, a long time and a lot of heat for it to actually raise from liquid, go from the liquid state up to when, it's reach, to when it reaches the gaseous state. Ice, and specific heat is actually um, different for each state of matter. So ice, to actually raise the temperature of ice, it only takes 2.03 grams um, joules of heat to raise uh, one gram of substance, one degree Celsius. And steam is the same way. It only takes 2.01. So it's about half as much energy to raise the temperature of ice or steam versus water. Aluminum is also actually relatively uh, high compared to other metals. Metals have really usually typically very low uh, specific heat value, but um, aluminum is actually pretty high at 0.897 joules per gram degree Celsius. So the lower the number, the easier it is for it to heat up. Okay, so when we use this, we use this in actual formulas um, and to actually talk about the amount of heat needed or how much temperature is shifted or um, how much um, mass we need of a certain substance. And so we're going to use this formula, Q equals MC delta T or Q equals MCAT. Um, Q is, when we're talking about heat, is, is, a, is a symbol for heat and that is usually uh, measured in joules. Uh, it could be measured in kilojoules or calories, it doesn't make a difference. Um, but this is, Q represents the amount of heat needed or heat required or energy. M is our symbol for mass, um, it's usually measured in grams. Um, C is our specific heat of that particular um, substance. And the delta T is a change in temperature. It can be, again, it can be in either Kelvin or degree Celsius. It doesn't make a difference because it's the change in heat. Now let's look about, let's talk about how this affects a phase change diagram. Okay, so this is a phase change diagram for water. Let me write that down. Okay, so notice um, if you look at the slopes for um, the, the change in energy as we increase the temperature of a solid versus liquid, notice solid has a steeper slope than liquid. That's because it requ liquid requires more energy to increase, um, to increase the temperature for a gram than it does a solid or gas. These are actually steeper in slopes than it is for a liquid. So this actually affects the phase change diagram as well, and that's because of specific heat. Let's go over and solve a problem together and uh, figure out how this actually affects um, other things. So we have um, an architect, and he's actually really interested in sustainable energy. So an architect designs a house that is partially heated by solar energy. Um, heat from the sun will be stored in a solar pond, similar to that of the swimming pool. So we have this pond that we're dealing with. Um, it's made up of 14,500 kilograms of granite rock, and then inside that it contains 22,500 kilograms of water. All right, together, the granite and the, wa the water absorb heat during the day and release it at night, which then releases at night into the, into the house, heating the house at night. Um, the architect found that the solar pond increases 22 degrees Celsius during the day and lowers at 22 degrees Celsius at night. So how much energy does it release and absorb during the day? So let's underline what we, the information that we have. Let's, say, let's start with water. Since we have two substances, granite and water, um, those, the, the heat, amount of energy it actually um, requires, the total amount of energy is going to be the, the Q of water, a granite, plus the Q of H2O. So let's, um, we, the Q we know equals MC delta T. Okay, so let's first deal with water. Okay, well water, we have uh, the mass is 22,500 kilograms and we want it in grams. Uh, so we're gonna make it 2.2, uh, 2.25 times 10 to the seventh grams, okay? The C of water or the specific heat of water is 4.184 um, joules per gram degree Celsius. Now the reason I wanted this even in grams and I couldn't use kilograms is because my unit for specific heat had grams in it. So I want to make sure these units are the same. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so then we're going to, we know that it changes the temperature, it increases uh, and decreases in temperature 22 degrees Celsius. So our change in temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, so when I multiply these all together, I get the amount of energy that's required, or that is, that is absorbed by this uh, solar pond, or at least the water within the solar pond. And so I multiply these together, and we get 2.1 times 10 to the ninth um, joules. And the reason I got joules is because, again, specific heat is measured in joules, or this specific heat is measured in joules. Okay, let's talk about the Q for granite, because the pool is made up of water and granite. The mass of the water is 14, I mean, sorry, the mass of the granite is 14,500 kilograms, which is 1.45 times 10 to the seventh kilograms, or sorry, grams. The Q for granite, if we look at our table, is 0.803. And again, that's changing 22 degrees Celsius. And I'm just not putting the units in just because I want to save some space. All right, when I multiply these all together, I get 2.4, sorry, that's not true. I'm sorry about that. I get 2.6 times 10 to the eighth uh, joules. Okay, so the total amount of energy that this actual granite, uh, this actual solar pool uh, gains and loses in a day is 2.4, when I add these up, 2.4 times 10 to the ninth joules of energy. So this actually saves us a lot of energy um, when we're dealing with when we're actually going to heat up or cool down our house. So we're saving a lot of money in sustainable energy uh, by using the solar pool. So specific heat actually um, tells us a lot of different things, and it's unique for each specific substance, and it's the amount of, of energy required to raise uh, one gram of a substance one degree Celsius.